we just watched thousands of Americans in the United States on Michigan Avenue in Chicago march in support of a no-fly zone over Ukraine. How many of them do you think would change their mind if they actually knew what a no-fly zone entailed? How many of them are aware of the fact that they are calling for the Biden administration to functionally declare war on Russia? It's something that we have to ask ourselves as popular support for a no-fly zone increases. And this wasn't some isolated incident. At New York's Guggenheim Museum, artists symbolized the need for a no-fly zone over Ukraine by flying paper airplanes from all floors of said museum. And I think that this sentiment will increase because the so-called foreign policy elite in the United States are ramping up calls for a no-fly zone over Ukraine. More than two dozen so-called experts on foreign policy signed an open letter to the Biden administration encouraging him to enact a, quote, limited no-fly zone. And as they continue to push this, I think the American people will see that and respond by also supporting what they believe is the humane thing to do. I mean, these are not bad people. We saw the signs, protect the skies, save lives. They don't understand. They think that this is going to lead to more people being protected when in actuality, this will make the conflict exponentially greater to unimaginable levels. Now, this, in my opinion, is a complete failure of the media. They either wittingly or unwittingly managed to manufacture consent for war with Russia. I don't know how many pundits even know what a no-fly zone entails, but either way, even if they do, they have failed to adequately explain this to the American people. And that's evident when you look at polls. So a majority of Americans, a large majority of Americans from both parties support a no-fly zone, but simultaneously, they don't want war with Russia. So Reuters reports some 74% of Americans, including solid majorities of Republicans and Democrats, said the United States and its allies in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization should impose a no-fly zone in Ukraine, the poll found. It was not clear if respondents who supported a no-fly zone were fully aware of the risk of conflict, and majorities opposed the idea of sending American troops to Ukraine or conducting airstrikes to support the Ukrainian army. So the disconnect here is evident. Americans don't want war with Russia. They don't want boots on the ground, and they don't want to support the Ukrainian army with airstrikes because they know what that would entail. That means that you'd be shooting at Russians from American planes, but yet they at the same time support a no-fly zone. It's apparent that they don't know what a no-fly zone is. And perhaps not all of them are ignorant, right? Maybe the people who we marched, some of them actually know that there is a risk. But most Americans, I think, don't actually know, and this is because the media has failed to educate them. Now, Michael McFaul, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, was a guest on MSNBC, and thankfully, he said what people desperately needed to hear. So he responded to the calls from so-called foreign policy experts to enact a limited no-fly zone, and he said, quite frankly, stop calling it a no-fly zone. We need to stop calling it this. It is war. That's what it is, and people need to understand this. So I hope that the American people hear this message, and more importantly, I hope that what he says reverberates in the media sphere because they have failed to educate the American people. Take a look at what he says because this is really, really important. Uh, I think a no-fly zone is, is the wrong move. I support the President of the United States on that. Um, uh, let's just get rid of this euphemism, no-fly zone. Let's call it for what it is, is war. Uh, if we try to uh, implement a no-fly zone, that means that an American pilot has to shoot down a Russian pilot. And if we do that, that's a declaration of war. Uh, and Vladimir Putin has been very clear that that's the way he sees it. And if we're prepared to do that, if the American people want to go to war with Russia, I think it would be a mistake. But if we're prepared to do it, then we should have a vote in the US Congress because the Congress is supposed to declare war. Um, that's what we need to do first. We should stop calling it a no-fly zone and we should start calling it declaration against uh, Russia to go to war. And I just don't think that's the right thing to do right now. Everything about- short of that, I support 100%. Every weapon system on the planet that we can send to them, but I do not think it's smart to send American soldiers uh, to fight Putin soldiers. What about this idea of a limited no-fly zone, one that protects humanitarian routes? I, again, those are my friends that, that put that letter out. I chose not to sign that letter, I'll tell you very honestly. I've signed other ones with them. Uh, I, I chose not to do this now. If you could get a guarantee 
uh, blessed by the United Nations with Russia and Ukraine all together, that we all recognize those corridors as being free and safe, then we should consider it. But we haven't done that yet. And yeah. so I just think it's, uh, I don't think we should go to war with Russia right now. Everything else, yes, I'm not prepared to go there to that level uh, along with my colleagues. He is absolutely right about that. When you call it a no-fly zone, you sanitize it. You strip the significance away from that policy. This means we are going to deliberately shoot down Russian planes. We'll see a direct confrontation between the U.S. military and the Russian military. That is World War III. So I want to be very clear here. When I talk about the ignorance of the American people, I am not saying that they're bad. I think that these are really good-hearted people. I think that they actually believe that a no-fly zone is the good thing because they hear on mainstream media that that's what's needed to actually aid the Ukrainian army. But they don't understand that that is a declaration of war on Russia. Russia has stated that they'd see that as a declaration of war, and that's what it would be. We're directly engaging Russia. This isn't just the Ukraine-Russia war. This becomes the Russia-U.S. war. This becomes World War III. And Americans have to understand what they're calling for because it's incredibly dangerous because you kind of create this feedback loop where Americans begin to hear more and more about a Ukrainian no-fly zone and they think this is the humanitarian solution. And then they in turn pressure lawmakers to support a no-fly zone who then pressure Biden to support a no-fly zone. Now, thankfully, the Biden administration has been adamant about not enacting a no-fly zone over Ukraine because they know what this would entail. They know that that's World War III and they do not want a direct confrontation with Russia, thankfully so. But if we don't educate people, then we end up charting on dangerous territory here where you have large, large amounts of people, a majority of Americans saying we should do war with Russia when they don't want war with Russia. But what they're saying is tantamount to war with Russia or tantamount to supporting a war with Russia. So the mainstream media, by dimwittedness or disingenuity, have managed to get the American people to support World War III and they don't even know that they support World War III. So... Pundits have got to do better. When it comes to foreign policy, they can't just speak flippantly about a no-fly zone. You have to describe in great detail what this entails and how this would lead to World War III. You can't just say that over and over again and talk about this as if it's some good solution when people don't even know what you're talking about. They're glued to their televisions currently because they're concerned with this conflict and they're getting information and they don't even really understand what information they're receiving, but they just hear this is a potential life-saving solution for Ukrainians, not knowing this is going to lead to potential nuclear warfare. So the media cannot continue to fail here, and I hope that Michael McFaul's me message resonates, because people have got to hear this. You can't just willy-nilly call for something as huge as World War III.